All right, so this is another episode of SOM Talk Live. I'm your host, Ruben Wood, and we got a very special guest on the building today. Yeah, I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself, okay, man. 1993, four, game, no game, man. You know what's going on. Straight out of the All right, so definitely what's up, man. Uh, so, take us back. How did you actually get into doing music? I've always been involved with music as far as rapping. My brother Twain, he the one thing for that. He came home with a webcam mic, but I was like in middle school. He plugged it up, played a beat, went to doing some gibberish type shit, and I was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> And ever since then, it just took off. And I was like in middle school. Okay, so that's definitely what's up. So now, what would you say, or who would you say has probably been some of your biggest inspirations as far as doing music? I definitely go with Future, Rich Homie, like people I can relate to, you know what I'm saying? Real street niggas that ain't trying to put on a facade or fake image, they just them, you know what I'm saying? So I can really connect to them. They just showed me how to relate my real life to the music. So that was a good way for me to adapt. Okay, so that's definitely what's up. So now being from uh, Brunswick, Georgia, now, how would you say the city is actually reacting and supporting you music-wise? I mean, just like any other city, you got haters, you got people that support you, but it's definitely some progress going on. They just want to see how serious I was taking, you know what I'm saying? Once they seen that I wasn't like no other, they can't help but back it. Either you back it or you slack it, so you, you make that option. <laughs> Okay, so that's definitely what's up. So now, the current title of the project that you're pushing is Cure. Now, what was it like for you going through the creative process with that? I mean, it was it wasn't as hard. It was real. It is more hard to pick which song I should put out, just to really let them know what I thought of as far as Cure. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was trying to push in the image I was trying to push on my first project that I was releasing. So that was really the hardest thing, is trying to get out the certain 10 songs that I wanted to really show who I was as an artist. Okay. So now, what would you say was probably like one of your favorite records off of the actual project itself? Definitely Ups and Down. Go check it out now. Ups and Down right now. You gotta go check it out. Other than that, City Girls and how your clothes it, so do that too. <laughs> okay. So what was like the, the story behind Ups and Downs? Painting a real picture. That song happened in probably like 15 minutes, man. It was because it was just real life. And it was just saying like, life was like a roller coaster, but it went down more than it's up, which it is. But real people like me that came out the street and had no silver spoon, I had to get it on my own. So yeah, it just let me know, like, let me just let everybody else know you can really get it from the bottom because it's going to be down more than it's up. When it's up, stay up. That's definitely what's up, man. So now when you look at like uh, how the music industry has changed, over the years and everything, you know, obviously I know you've seen it since you've been doing music. Uh, what would you say has probably been one of the most significant changes for you yourself or that you've noticed? Uh, definitely trying to keep up with it. All right, so the first question I'm gonna ask you is, what would you say is the craziest thing you've done in life? Yeah, 15, man, I had to, Make something happen with a vehicle, you know what I'm saying? And ended up having to hop out the passenger seat window for full speed without no shoes on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what happened in between, you can use your imagination to go with that, you feel me? All right, the kangaroo definitely know what I'm talking about, and a lot of other things, but crazy as shit, you know what I'm saying? And that's the easiest I can go about saying that. All right, so now what would you say uh, question number two, what would you say is your favorite food? Country nigga, pork and beans, ground beef, put them beans together and you got me sold immediately. I ain't gonna know. Okay, okay. So question number three, what is one thing that you can't live without? My baby, money, my niggas, that's like family, you know what I'm saying? Blood, thick, no water, we're gonna stick together, four L, no gang, you feel me? That's how we're doing about it, right? I can't live without that. If it ain't that, then I can't live without my veins, my blood, I'm starting to All right, so that's definitely what's up. So now, question number four, what would you say is probably one of the craziest things a female has said to you? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I can go deep on that. You know what I'm saying? First time you hear my book, they put their thumb. No, never mind. Actually, I'm going to just revert on that. <laughs> uh, but for real, uh, you know what I'm saying? Hear my book tell you, love for the first day. On some real shit, that shit get real. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy coming off front. You know what I'm saying? That love shit get tossed around left and right. But when you hear it, you know it's real for the first time you look, and it's crazy. So it hit different. You know what I'm saying? When it's real. Other than that, hitting a female think she can beat my mama, like, I told her my mama gonna beat her up, you know what I'm saying? And it was a little threat, but she looked me up and down, like, tell her on up, that was enough. That was another crazy thing, but that's probably the top two right now. Okay, so the what's up, and what would you say, question number five, is your favorite verse or bar from one of your songs? Yeah, we're gonna go back to Damn No, know, video dropped today, by the way. And it was just basically saying, the shit, you know what I'm saying, niggas complain about, I had to go with it. So it's like, the shit niggas take for granted, you know what I'm saying? Niggas over here like me, we can't even see, we can't even think about it. You don't even raise it in our head, but niggas over here crying about certain shit, you know what I'm saying? So that's the most relatable verse, the most really verse I can really just think off the top of my head, because that's too genuine, that's just literally how I feel. Real shit. Okay, so that's definitely what's up, man. Sure. So now, what would you say is probably some of the best advice you've received to help you navigate throughout the industry? From a real new Chris, you know what I'm saying? That's my brother, Lo. And goddamn, he just told me real shit. He ain't even industry, he just told me the real advice I can get for the industry. If you're going to do something, do it for real with your whole heart, your whole mind. You're going to do it halfway, you're going to get halfway to work from it. So I put that into my real thought, put that into my real life, and I went whole heart to everything I do, everything I think. It's about music. So when he told me that, I took it, thought about it, and I implemented it in my life. And ever since then, I've been progressing. I'm going up. All right, so that's definitely what's up. So now you currently managed by like family members of yours too, right? Correct. Okay, so now how how has that been? Y'all like, you know, work cohesively together, do y'all butt heads or what? You got a butt head. We butt heads playing 2K, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to butt heads doing something like this, but it's a growing process, a learning process, and I'd rather go through this with them than anybody else, you know what I'm saying? Because they're going to do it with their whole heart. They're going to have to do it. They ain't going to try to cheat me. They're going to try to beat me. So we're going to put it together and we learn and we're going to we take it 100%, go full speed, 93 with it. Definitely. So now you currently have your project out right now. Video just dropped for one of your singles today. So now after that, like what's going to be next for you in the coming years? It's just more uh, networking and just basically more marketing and putting myself out there. You should see, hit me in your club real recent. You should hit me in your club coming up. And that's just building more relationships with DJs like yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's just the thing that I'm doing right now is just building a real relationship that's gonna matter and forgetting the ones that don't. So coming up, that's what you're gonna really see me progressing, doing things like this. That's gonna really separate me from the rest. Right, definitely. So now, the one of the last questions I'm gonna actually ask you is, what do you want people to take away from your music to listen to it? Is this to be genuine? Is this when you ain't no hurdle you can't cross? I don't care how high it is. Even if for a day you gotta jump like LeBron, you're gonna turn into LeBron. So when you turn when you turn my music on, you're gonna hear ups and downs. You're gonna realize like, I don't give a fuck. I've been down, but it's gonna be up. And when it's up, it's stuck. So it's up to you type shit. Even they don't know. It. They don't know how pain feels, you know what I'm saying? It's shit like that, that when people hear my music, they see it's like, oh, okay, it's real. It ain't no fake, it ain't no facade, it ain't no image. It's just real music type shit. So when people hear my music, I just like get a sense of motivation and reassurance that, yeah, real niggas still exist, and we can still go about shit a real way. We ain't gotta be fake with it. Right, definitely. So I did want to ask you too now, uh, you know, we both from, from the city, Brunswick, yes, Georgia. So how did seeing what happened with Ahmad affect you? I know Ahmad personally, so that, that, that hit my soul. And it just brought you back to life to realize like, fuck sir, not, not even gonna say that, but either way, it's just like, it's still, shit ain't changed. You know what I'm saying? Certain things ain't changed. Even though you might chill with certain people, you might be in your little domicile, you might be in your little space. At the end of the day, shit, just like it was 60 years ago, people still see you the same way. So I don't make that mistake and forget that. And Ed, man, much love to Mark and all his family right now. Real shit, because 
I can never imagine going through something like that. You know what I'm saying? Until you really go through it. It just brings you back to reality that people still see you as nothing but a black man at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what you're doing or how successful you is, they just see you as a nigga. Fuck that. Real shit. Right, definitely, definitely. So, now you got the music coming out, got videos dropping, you just said where you're going to see yourself in the next couple of years. So now, what would you say is like some advice you could give to the next artist that's trying to make something happen in the music industry? Uh, just be real with yourself, man. No matter what, be real with yourself. Don't try to sound like the next person or the next artist. Be original, but also be real and realize that what the next person doing and how did he make it. Don't just think you can do anything and make it. Be real and take certain advice, but don't take all the advice ain't good. Some advice sound like advice, but it be real hate. So be real with yourself and put work in. Because the amount of work in is what you're going to get out of it. That shit. So as long as you're putting that work in with the music, create music, create relationships, build relationships, and going about it with a whole 360 and looking at scenes, taking a step back and seeing what you really got to do, you'll be successful. I don't care how you do it, what genre you're in, or what, how you, you're going to be successful. Definitely, definitely. So when you look at the uh, rap game right now as a whole, what's one thing that you yourself feel that you can bring to it or change? Genuine, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of people that's, it, people can't really connect to. You got drill rappers, you got certain this type of rapper, but I got, I, I'm kind of in the middle. You know what I'm saying? I talk about the shit drill rappers talk about, but I don't relate it the same way they do. So when you hear me, you get the same message as far as future, as far as, uh, a drill rapper like Pooh Shiesty, a Big Third, you know what I'm saying? There's certain people that ain't trying to paint no picture. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna tell you how it is, but I'm gonna put it with some harmonizing behind it, so you can feel it at the same time. Everything I say, I've been through. Everything I say, I've seen. So it's gonna be able to connect to niggas just like me that's down in the street trying to work for the people that's around them. Definitely. So for the people who don't know, because you know a lot of people, they think of Brunswick, Georgia, and they be like, oh, look got islands and beaches and stuff. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so for the people who don't know, like, you know, tell tell the, the masses of the world, because you're an artist, you know, you're coming up out of there. It's not too many who actually come out of there and have certain opportunities. So let them know, you know, something that they wouldn't know about Brunswick, especially from our perspective? <sighs> Boy, that's a list. <laughs> but just to be vague, man, growing up in a small country town, it really brings, give you a knowledge of more hands-on than to do it in the city. You can't really go and get somebody to do, or pay somebody to do something for you like you can up here in the city. You gotta get underneath that car and change that goddamn oil yourself sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got that at all. <laughs> but sometimes you gotta learn. Country niggas like me, man, we figure out shit on our own before we go to the next person and pay them to do it. So that's a lot of shit I took in from the country, man. Even down to cooking and working on shit, to building relationships with certain people. It's all about doing it yourself, you know what I'm saying? Before you expect somebody else to do it for you, you learn how to do it yourself, you know what I'm saying? So you know what to get from, you know how it should be done. And coming up in Bronze, man, you gotta do shit yourself. It's a city full of business down there, man. Real shit. Right, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, so now, take us out. Let us know where people can find you at. We definitely gotta have you back too, man. Right, we're gonna be back. Look me up on IG, KT93 Music, Facebook, KT93. You're looking up on TikTok, KT93 Music. If you're looking up on Apple Music, on Spotify, I don't care, YouTube, KT93, I'm not gonna make it hard, it's real easy. Both characters, motherfucker, KT93. <laughs> <laughs> Type that shit in and I'm gonna come up ASAP. All right, so that's what's up, man. Shout out to you for stopping by today. Definitely, so make sure you all do keep a lot, tap in, tune in to KT93.